Hey folks, welcome back to the Codswell Collectibles YouTube channel. I am Greg Brown, owner of Codswell Collectibles. This week I wanted to talk in, uh, about something that I'm very passionate about, and that is uh, the Vietnam War, in particular the uniforms and outfits worn uh, by soldiers during the Vietnam War. Um, Codswell Collectibles has in the past made Vietnam War era sets. Um, we've done um, Tiger Strap has been one of our most popular patterns, which is a pattern that originated and proliferated during the Vietnam War. And we did some figures that actually had the Mitchell camouflage helmet. But that was pretty much it as far as um, the scope of what we did. Other companies like Toy Soldier um, did some Vietnam War era sets, as did Ace Workshop. And then you get a sprinkle here, a sprinkle there. Um, 21st Century Toys did some back in their heyday. And then you have some of the smaller companies who did it. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to do um, a variety of patterns that have been done a little bit here and there, um, but not in the scope of what I wanted to do. And those three patterns are Beogam, um, better known as um, commercial duck hunter pattern camouflage. Um, Tiger Stripe, which we're more than familiar with, and then the third pattern, which is Mitchell Camouflage. Now, a little bit of a backstory. Um, Duck Hunter Camouflage originated from the World War II USMC um, camouflage pattern that they wore uh, during the Pacific Campaign, and there was a U.S. Army unit, and I forget their name. They wore it in Europe uh, for a very short time after the Normandy landings, but because they were being mistaken as German soldiers, they removed their camouflage because at that time, really, Germany was the only real country that was using camouflage uh, to the extent that they did. So Duck Hunter Commercial was something that when special forces were working, um, were getting ready um, for uh, going over and advising um, the South Vietnamese, um, namely Green Berets, um, they took what they could get their hands on because really the United States didn't have a camouflage uh, available. Woodland camouflage did not come out until many years later. Um, the precursor of woodland, which is Ertl, um, and I forget the name of that, that, that's a very close approximation of what woodland evolved into. That didn't come until a few few years later in the war, in, in the Vietnam War as well. Most soldiers were wearing uh, olive drab. So what, what the Special Forces guys did is they went to their local sporting goods stores and they were buying commercial duck hunter camouflage right off the shelves. And this is basically the pattern that you see here. Um, so they started going over, and they went, when they went over to Vietnam, they were wearing this type of pattern. And then what they ended up doing is, as if you, if you study the, the history of, of the war, they had people over in Vietnam uh, replicate the pattern, and they started getting these made in Vietnam. The Vietnamese called it Beogam, B-E-O-G-A-M. So that's why I call it the Beogam pattern. A lot shorter than saying commercial duck hunter. And if I remember correctly, Beogam means leopard in Vietnamese. Now this particular sample that you see here is taken from an actual 1960s era commercial duck hunter pattern that I got at an Army Navy surplus store many, many years ago. And I sent the pattern over to our factories and had them digitally scan it and replicate it um, to be as close as possible. Um, many of you might recognize this as a very similar pattern to that which was used with the G.I. Joe Adventure Team. They also used the same pattern for the G.I. Joe Marine, except it was a little bit more green. Um, the real pattern varied by manufacturer, uh, but one of the more common ones was kind of a brownish color green, which has this tan effect on it. Um, 21st Century Toys was another company that made, they did one set that had it. It was kind of in the same thing in the tan in the tan vein. And then oddly enough, Formative actually made, made these as well. But again, they were made 20 something years ago. Nobody's really touched upon these. So that's what we ended up doing. Well, what is different with these that, that we ended up doing is we wanted to do a variety. The shirt um, is a long sleeve shirt. We made sure that the cuffs there is no snap to unsnap them, so you'll have to, if you put a figure's hand arm into there, you may have to make sure that the hand is disconnected, and then you put the hand back in there. And then, what you'll notice about the shirt, once you have it on the figure, it is a simple two-pocket shirt. It's very similar to the OG 107 early model, um, 
has flaps on the front, little buttons here, and it's just your standard commercial shirt. The pants are kind of the precursor to the um, cargo pants that we know today. One of the misnomers though, um, we're familiar with cargo pockets being very large and have kind of like this bellowed vibe to them that they can expand. The cargo pants back in this time, which is the early 1960s, were different. The pockets were considerably smaller and they didn't bellow out. Then that's what we based ours upon. So we have the smaller pockets here. And then on the back, we have the pocket flaps for um, for the back pockets as well. Yep, and it even has, it has, it, they're, they're simulated, but they're flaps here for the, you know, for the inside pockets in the front. So this was the generally accepted as your standard uniform that uh, Special Forces advisors would have been wearing um, come going into the war in the early 1960s. And then they, they would slowly be start, they would slowly have these being made in Vietnam. Now, what ended up happening is <clears throat> as time progressed, um, they, they started using Tiger Stripe and um, Tiger Stripe, the closest I can put it as far as a family goes, it's very close to the French lizard pattern. Um, and then you, you get into kind of in the French lizard pattern, you have the British brushstroke pattern, which also kind of leads into the Rhodesian family of patterns. Um, but this one was way more conducive to the, the climate and to the, uh, the foliage in that area. Whereas this one, this one worked out really good, worked out good. This one worked out even better. So what we did is we took the same pattern of the shirt cuts, but we did it in tiger stripe. But then what they did is one of the things that you'll notice if you study the special forces is they, 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 they tweaked it a little bit. They added, they call them a cigarette pocket, which they put one on the arm and they put one on the leg. And it really wasn't a cigarette pocket. It was big enough to fit hold the cigarettes. Um, but what they were generally intended for is they were first aid pouch pockets. So if you had an, if you had, um, if you've been shot in your leg or whatever, they could find the first aid pouch there. And the same thing for the shoulder. If you had an upper chest wound or an arm wound, they could get it from there. So that is the second design. We call it, uh, I think we call it the cigarette pouch version. So it come, the cigarette pouch is on the shoulder and it's on the pants as well. Now, for those people that want to have a little bit of both, what we went ahead and did is you can get the tiger stripe version um, with or without the cigarette pouch um, add-on. And the same thing goes with the BO game, AKA commercial duck hunter. You can get this from us um, with or without the cigarette pouches on there. And then finally, what we did is we did a what if. And the what if is the Mitchell camouflage pattern. I just have the shirt here to kind of give you an example. Um, Mitchell camouflage was something that was tested by the US military, but for, for field use, they really only used this pattern on helmet covers. Um, there was kind of, I think, a green side and I think a brown side, if I'm correct. I might be mixing that up with USMC patterns from World War II. But you most likely saw this pattern right here on a helmet cover of a Marine or an Army rifleman during the Vietnam War. However, they did test this out as a pattern and some people, when they were <clears throat> in Vietnam, they went to these tailors and such like that and they got this pattern replicated and you can find examples of this pattern in this shirt and then this, this pant style, you know, that you see here, sometimes with the cigarette pouch, sometimes without. Um, sometimes they're a little bit more like the BDUs. I think you've even seen some of them that are like the OG 107 late issue, which is the four pouch that you're more familiar with, with the Vietnam War. So since we were producing the other two, we thought, you know, what the heck, let's go ahead and, and do these in Mitchell. Um, they did exist. They were more the exception and not the rule. Um, but we thought it would be interesting to do these. And again, these are available with and without the cigarette pouches. So these have been out for a while, but what we just got in to complement these are boonie caps. Now, Cotswold Collectibles has been selling boonie caps for decades now. Our boonie caps have been in Olive Drab, they've been in Ertl, they've been in uh, Tiger Stripe and such like that. Um, to me, the, the, brim, um, the brim of the hat was pretty wide. Um, it had a um, uh, a neck, a string, that's what they cut out of string, whatever, cord that I thought was uh, way too thick. So I went and I studied on um, what the boonie caps would have looked like during the Vietnam War. 
And there were two different styles that most people are familiar with. Um, there's the regular brim style that is about this wide as far as the brim goes. That's kind of, and it's kind of carries over to today's uh, boonie caps that they wear today. You see some of them that are a little bit wider. Um, but with what we did with these is we went with this diameter brim. And then if you look up close, you'll see that there are actually eyelets on each side of the cap, which is something we've never done before. So we have the, the vent eyelets that are on here. So we have these in Tiger Stripe. We have them in BL Gam, Commercial Duck Hunter. And we also did them in um, the Mitchell Camouflage. And these are made from the same material that the uniforms are made from, so they'll match perfectly. However, we took it one step forward, one step further, and we did the short brim boonie hat. This is also known as the bucket hat. The best way, the easiest um, example to give to you would be um, if you've seen the movie, The Green Berets with John Wayne from 1968, don't give me the lie, they wore bucket hats. Um, some soldiers, what they did is they actually took the brim of the existing buck, of the existing hat and cut it. Some other ones, uh, they just had these, these just made. I, again, the, the, the market in Vietnam for making custom pieces was, was just outrageous. I don't even get me started on the Navy SEALs and, and the stuff that they did. But as you can see, the brim is considerably smaller than the other one. And it fits on the head and just gives just enough cover on the head um, to provide a little bit of shade. Um, this is the Tiger Stripe one. This is the Duck Hunter one. And this is um, obviously the, the Mitchell Camouflage one. You can mix and merge. I mean, you, you can look at photographs. Um, I've, I've been wanting to make this for, gosh, over a decade. And I was I finally, got the, finally got the factor to do it right. And these are, these are really good. And, and, and here's the deal about these, um, these items. Coswell Collectibles, we are known for doing accessories and such like that for vintage action figures. But we're also a company that, that a lot of our stuff can translate over to one six scale articulated action figures like I'm old school, Blue Box Dragon, but you know, Damn Toys, um, DID, Soldier Story, and stuff like that. The way that these are built, and unfortunately I didn't show an example of it, these fit a vintage body, but these also fit a one six scale body as well. So if you are a customizer, a kit basher that, that wants to build something in relation to a, um, a Green Beret or a Navy SEAL from the Vietnam War era, these would be great for those kit bashes. The, the, we did not want to make these to be so much 1960s G.I. Joe um, themed in that the pockets were simple and the buttons were simple and they have a toy-like appearance. We wanted to make these look like what they would have worn during the 1960s. So they're a lot more accurate to what would what a, what a soldier would have been wearing during that time as opposed to the simplicity of the G.I. Joe um, Marine or, or soldier would be. But anyway, um, feel free to check these items out. They are under the Elite Brigade um, section under uniforms and accessories and such like that and uh, we have plenty of stock we have boots that go with these we have uh, ammo pouches that go with these m16s m60s uh, we have a whole plethora in addition to other items that we care from other manufacturers but that being said make sure that you uh, check out and uh, like and hit the bell for our youtube channel so that you get alerts for what's going on and, uh, and keep checking back for uh, new videos from Cosmo Collectibles. Mm -hmm.